Hey, it's Mark from Ripple Training. Today on MacBreak Studio, I'm really excited to demonstrate a brand new plugin we just released called RT Punch-Ins. So here's the scenario. I've got a shot here of iJustine and it's a 4K clip in a 1080 timeline, which is very, very common today because even phones shoot in 4K and we usually deliver in 1080. So we've got a lot of resolution to work with and we take advantage of that. So in this case, let me just play this clip. And that shot that I showed you previously? Yeah, that one. Okay, for emphasis, I wanna punch in right when she says, Yeah, that one. In other words, I wanna scale it up. Now, you could, of course, just blade and scale it up, but I wanna do a little punch in, a little zoom. What are my options for doing that in Final Cut? One is to use Ken Burns, so going down here and choosing Crop, and then choosing Ken Burns. But the problem with Ken Burns is that it works for the entire clip duration, which means for it to work properly, you have to cut the clip up, and if you want it to punch in and stay punched in for a while and pull back, You've got to reverse Ken Burns, you've got to do multiple cuts. It's just a pain in the neck. So it's really not effective here. It's not what I want to do, so I'm going to reset that. The other option is to set keyframes. But honestly, in Final Cut, if you keyframe both scale and position, your move won't look quite right. And I'll give you an example of that in a minute to demonstrate that. But I want to show you kind of the key reason we made RT Punch-Ins is for something like this. So what I'm going to do is press I for an endpoint. And you can see I've got RT punch in selected here in the titles and generator sidebar. And the first thing here are the punches. And I'm working in an HD or UHD timeline. What's most important here, it's 16.9. So I'll select this and I'll press Q. And I'll actually trim it to end at this other marker. And if I do nothing else and play it. Yeah, that one. It's done. I've got a punch in and it works perfectly. Now. If I put my plate at the beginning of this, we have this on-screen control. The default state is to zoom exactly 200%, which means if you have a 4K or technically UHD clip in a 1080 timeline, it will zoom exactly 200% and you'll have no degradation of resolution. However, you can change this. You can take this and you can reposition it and you can scale it and choose exactly the frame you want. And you notice nothing's changing because I'm at the beginning of this little title effect. So let's say I want it right about there. And now when I play, yeah, that's my exact framing that I get. If I change my mind with a playhead somewhere in the middle of the clip, I can still reposition this to find exactly the framing that I want. Yeah, that one. Great. So let's look at a couple of other options in the inspector here. First of all, there are tips available for all of these different templates in RT punch -ins. If you click the checkbox, you'll get a bunch of tips that explain how to use it. We also have a bunch of support videos on our website if you want to dig deeper. You can turn the zoom in and the zoom out off. So for instance, if you wanted to do this as a straight cut, a jump cut, you could just turn these off. And now when I play. Yeah, that one. We just get a straight jump cut. So I'll turn those back on. I can also select the speed of the zoom in and the zoom out to be fast, medium, or slow. I can add some rotation and I can change the interpolation of the zoom style. So we've got a lot of flexibility on how this punch in occurs. The other thing you notice about this is I was able to do it across a cut or as many cuts as are in here and it will work perfectly. Yeah, that one. Okay, here I have a stock photo and I wanna punch in to these two young women on the right. Let's see how keyframes work. So with my plate at this location, I'll set a keyframe for both position and scale. I'll move forward a little bit. Then I can either drag in these parameters here or I'll select the transform tool this time. I'll need to zoom out a little bit so that I can see that bounding box. I'll scale this up and move it over. and then shift Z. So now I have an animation, I can't tell. What I love about using RT punches is you can tell right away that there's something going on because you can see it on top. Here I can't see it unless I choose to show video animation and I can see those keyframes. So let's play that. Let's move these further apart so it's a little more obvious what's going on. See that weird move? 
that's a problem. And what the reason that comes about is if I choose position, we can see our position keyframes are smooth, but if I go to scale, you can't smooth those scale keyframes. So you either have to do linear or if they're smooth, you get this crazy move that just doesn't work. So let's reset that. And of course, if you're working across a cut, it's not gonna work at all. Let's instead use RT Punch. Let's say I wanna start here and go to the end of the clip. So I'll just select RT Punch, Q, and with the plate at the beginning, I'll move my little framer over here and say I wanna frame them, assuming this is a very large resolution photograph, of course, and we punch in, done. If we want it to stay punched in, we can just turn off the zoom out and it will stay punched in for the duration of the clip. Let's also change the zoom and speed to medium. Perfectly smooth punch in. And once we've punched in, we can of course adjust the framing. And unlike keyframes, you have a lot of flexibility on the different options. So instead of easing both, we could do decelerate for a different kind of animation. So it slows down coming in, or we could do an accelerate. And each has a very different feel. I could do slow with accelerate. I'll go back to medium and ease both. And of course we can also make this a jump cut. And what's kind of cool, if we make it a jump cut and shorten it up, we could make multiple ones. So I can option drag another one and then reframe this maybe for these guys, option drag again, and reframe for these guys. And of course, each time I reframe, I can also zoom. And now we have a series of jump cuts. And if I want for each of those, I can also add rotation. And if I want to move these around together, I can select them all, press Command G to put them in a storyline, and then I can move them around together and swap them easily. Try doing that with keyframes. So you can see how incredibly flexible this punch tool is. You can punch out as well. So in this shot, I have a punch applied already. You can see I've turned off the zoom in. I only have a zoom out. So here we have the opposite where we start in tight and then pull back to reveal the scene. How about this? I'm sure you've seen this before. This is uh, Justine's lovely sister, Jenna, and we recently shot her in Los Angeles, and the camera, for some reason, recorded it sideways. Often this happens if you start recording before turning the camera, which we didn't in this case, but this is what we ended up with. Well, there are several ways to fix it, but one great way is to use a punch. Let's check this out. I'll just press X to set a range. I'll add or punch with Q. And then over in the inspector, I'll change the rotation to 270. And I'll turn off the zoom in and the zoom out. So there's no animation. And I fixed it, it's perfect. I didn't need to rotate end scale, it's just done. And because this is implemented as a title effect, I can stretch it over multiple clips and have it affect all of them. And I can also reframe easily directly in the viewer. So you might say that's great, but what if you also want to pan after you've punched in? You want to move somewhere else. This is a good example. So here Justine is describing the camera and she's pointing out some features. And I'd like to punch in because we've got lots of resolution to work with. So let's do that. I'll move my plate where I want the punch in to start. I'll press I. And let's say I want it to end here. I'll press O. I'll select my punch in and press Q. With the playhead at the start, I'll set the framing I want. I really want to focus up here and I'll keep the default size so I know I'm not losing any resolution. I'll also change the speed to medium. And let's play that. Okay, it's great, but her hand moves out of the frame and in fact, it moves quite low right here. So this is all we have to do. Let's say at this point, after she's talked a little bit about this feature, we want to pan down. All we need to do, I'll press I for an endpoint. I'll select the pan template. 
Q for a connect edit. And then the key here is to drag that pan below the punch. That gives it the power. I'll also set the pan speed to medium, so it's a little bit slower. Then I'll move the plate forward. With the pan selected, I'll use this on-screen control to reframe the shot. Let's say about like that. And now when we play, we punch in and then we pan down. Now the coolest thing is if you make both of these the same duration and you make the speed that they come out the same, let's say I'll leave them both at the fast setting, you'll get a nice clean pull back out to the full frame. So let's play the whole thing. Punch in on the feature, pan down, and pull out. Perfect. So here at Ripple Training, we create tutorials. It's just what we do. And we usually use a combination of ScreenFlow and Final Cut Pro to do that. But with RT Punch-ins, we're finding we don't even really need to use ScreenFlow most of the time. So what we've done with RT Punch-ins is add a set of different highlight options. And here we are, for example, in a Logic Pro demo. And I've added, in addition to punching in and panning, a highlight, in this case, a circle highlight. So let's just play through it. So you can see I've used these to punch into the interface. Then I've used a circle highlight to identify a specific area. And it's easy to adjust the position, the scale, the radius, the color, everything you want, and whether you want the background to fade or not. And then we pan over to another part of the interface before pulling back out again. And we're doing it across multiple cuts. So you can record, rather than spending $129 on ScreenFlow, if you need to do this kind of user interface tutorial by using QuickTime Player to do your recording and RT Punch-ins to do your punch-ins and your highlights, you can create very sophisticated tutorials very quickly. Here's an example of a Resolve Fusion tutorial where I'm using the rectangle highlight. And the rectangle is nice because it's very easy to change its size and its aspect ratio directly in the inspector to choose the area that you want to emphasize. Here's an example of using the line highlight. And the line is easy to manipulate. You can move the entire highlight around, or you can manipulate the line itself with the on-screen controls. In addition, we have arrows, and each of these highlights include optional text as well. It's great for adding emphasis and explanations in educational videos. And if you have Ripple callouts complete, you can add trackable callouts to your punches and pants. RT Punch-ins are also great for social media posts. The first thing you can do is make your media fit the aspect ratio. So here I have a square aspect ratio project that's designed for an Instagram post. And I have a photo, could be a video, it doesn't matter, that doesn't match the aspect ratio. Rather than using spatial conform or adjusting the scale, you can simply use a punch-in. So I'll press X to select the clip. I'll select the square punch-in and press Q. I'll move it down below these other ones. I'll turn those on in a second. And then with the playhead at the beginning of the clip, I can choose exactly what framing I want for this. So let's say I want it to include most of the area, maybe right about like that. So instead of it punching in here, I'm going to turn off the zoom in and zoom out and just use this punch in to reframe the shot. It's static, but it's framed in the full square frame and I can reposition it exactly where I want. In addition to that, I've added a punch to actually punch in. I've added a pan so that after we see this shot, we punch in tighter and then we pan over to reveal this church. And then I'm using the last two highlights we haven't talked about yet, emojis and a text label to add some social media components. So I'll select each of those and turn those on and then play through the whole thing. Punch in, pan over, text and emoji. And of course, for the emojis, you can add any kind of special character you want. So RT Punch-ins are great for social media posts as well. RT Punch-ins are also great for animating web pages. And I've done exactly that here to show you where you can find them. RippleTraining.com. Under Plugins, select Ripple Live. What do you think? Let us know in the comments below. Subscribe if you like the content. And we'll see you next week here on MacBreak Studio. Break Studio.